Hi guys, it is a fine day, a fine day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here in the paradise outside of Inverness, Florida here on this lovely 80 degree January day, Friday morning, January 17th, 2020. I believe so uh, <coughs> the little dog and I need to go meet a septic pumper to uh, see if the old <coughs> septic system here on my waterfront property meets the anti-algae guidelines good lord don't get me going on that but oh yes in case you're wondering who this lunatic is in front of you, my name is Sam Mitchell, and this is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, doing what we do every day when we're not looking for uh, waterfront properties in Florida to uh, <coughs> survive the collapse of global industrial and civilization in the planet. And since it is Friday morning, you probably know what that means. This is when I turn to, for lack of a better word, uh, my favorite environmental news roundup here on Collapse Chronicles, and that's when we go over there and visit Rhett Butler and the folks over at mongabay.com who, for the past 20 years, have been roaming around a collapsing planet to uh, chronicle the collapse. And so let's see what is on Manga Bay's mind. Are you going to sit here or are you going to go? Do you have a mousy or something to go get like that? You have a mousy or a squirrely? Anything like that? No, you're going to sit here? All right, Sancho Panza says he's going to join this one. Let me put on my 99 cent ch made in China glasses so we can read. All right. <clears throat> We're going to start out in what's left of the rainforest of Colombia. We're going to go to Colombia's heart of the world where mining mega projects overrun indigenous land. Yes. <coughs> this is, we're going to go deep into the Sierra Nevada de Santa Maria de Santa Marta, an isolated group of mountains situated along Colombia's northern coast, which has the unique distinction of harboring more threatened endemic species than anywhere else on planet Earth. And, of course, what do you think is happening in the heart of the world agricultural expansion has already come at the expense of vital habitat over the past several decades and now resource exploitation and infrastructure projects planned for the region are further threatening the mountains ecosystems according to scientists and local activists. Uh, four indigenous groups uh, inhabit the region. Uh, yes, and we all know what is getting ready to happen to the indigenous groups as legal and illegal mining ramping up in their territories. Uh, in addition to mining, the indigenous councils have denounced large-scale infrastructure projects such as the development of a coal shipping port, a hydroelectric dam, and even a hotel that has been built without indigenous consent. Okay, we're going to go from uh, Colombia, I believe next door to Brazil, but not to the Amazon, to the Cerrado, where we see communities in the Brazilian Cerrado 
besieged, yes, besieged by global demand for soy. Uh huh. So we have some <clears throat> immense mega farm uh, in the Brazilian Cerrado. Uh, it covers approximately one half million acres so far. Uh, this is one farm. Good Lord. Uh, so far has destroyed one half million acres and much of the soy produced there is exported to the EU and China. There is evidence that Estrondo, Estrondo as this planet-eating disaster is nicknamed, was born of land-grabbing and fraud accusations the mega farm denies. Yes, it is now caught up in a major investigation by federal police on corruption involving judges, lawyers, <coughs> and farmers. Uh, anyone who is not uh, familiar with the tragedy of the co of the commons. Astrondo's astronomical land growth has been based partly on a takeover of common lands used by seven traditional communities. Land rights guaranteed them under Brazilian law. Yes, uh, but Astrondo has installed fences, watchtowers, and hired armed guards to protect its land claims and has hired security forces that have threatened and intimidated indigenous communities. Do you think so? Uh, let's see, uh, let me I want to get a, uh, well, I guess I'll, okay. So we're going to go from the Cerrado to the, uh, <clears throat> to the Amazon. What, what does it look like in the first two weeks uh, in the Amazon jungle? I can't remember who that, uh, I know that I heard this weirdo uh, coming out with his doomsday predictions for 2020. A, a couple of weeks ago and whoever this character was can't remember who it was he said that he predicted that the murder of indigenous yes the murder of indigenous land activists was going to skyrocket in 2020 and that Brazil would take over uh, from the Philippines as being the deadliest country on the planet for indigenous land protectors. So what do we see two weeks into 2020? Five murdered so far in 2020 uh, <clears throat> in Brazilian Amazon land conflicts adding to 2019's surge. Already this month, three Mirana indigenous people have been murdered uh, in Kawari, an oil and gas rich town on the Amazon River. Uh, let's see, two peasant fa farmers have also been murdered in Murano state. Uh, all five are believed to have died due to land disputes. Yes, this month's violence builds on a spike in rural murders and intimidation in the Amazon and across Brazil seen in 2019, which many analysts say is being catalyzed by inflammatory rhetoric of President Jair Bozo Nero. Uh, 
Anyway, a major uh, concern is this new law passed at the end of last year providing sweeping amnesty to past land gra grabbers and a proposed bill that would open indigenous lands to mining, which could result in a further surge in land conflicts and violence this year. That is exactly what it's going to result in. So as long as we're uh, in the Brazilian Amazon, you can draw your own dots between that story and this one. For the final months of 2019, Amazon deforestation hit its highest level in at least 13 years. Deforestation during the final five months of 2019 hit the highest level since at least 2006, reveals data released this week by Brazil's own government. Uh, deforestation since the end of July surpassed 4,400 square kilometers more than twice the clearing recorded for the period one year earlier and 51 percent above the previous record set in 2007. This data does not include forest loss to fires. The newly rele released data suggests that forest clearing is on track to surpass last year's deforestation rate. Do you think so? Uh, but I guess this is anywhere on the planet. You go get that squirrely like that. Don't rile up that attack parrot while you're over there though. All right. <clears throat> Indigenous lands now hold 36% or more of remaining intact forest landscapes as uh, these land grabbers uh, attacking indigenous reserves from Brazil all over the planet to get to the last 36% of intact forest landscapes on the planet. More than one-third of the world's remaining pristine forest, known officially as intact forest landscapes, exist within land uh, in indigenous reserves. We can all figure out what that means. Okay. I, I, I can't believe that this is just now happening. Rangers in Indonesia's Ase province to get guns. There you go. Rangers uh, will get firearms to defend themselves against poachers, illegal liners, and miners. Uh, Oh, uh, rangers elsewhere across Indonesia are, are already armed. Yes, uh, conservationists have welcomed the decision to arm Ase's forest rangers, but some have expressed doubt that even this will be effective in reducing human encroachment into forests that are home to near extinct species such as Sumatran tigers, orangutans, and elephants. Uh, and then they also mention this other story which they talk about further. Authorities in Indonesia are also deliberating an Islamic Shahira bylaw that would prescribe 100 lashes of the cane for wildlife poachers. So kill a tiger or a rhino or an elephant and you will get your, ash, your ass lashed 
100 times by a cane. I guess if you are are a, an Islamic poacher. <laughs> Uh, okay, I think we, we have, we've heard this already, but this is Manga Bay's spin on the story. 2019, officially the second hottest year on record, while the 20-teens were the hottest decade ever. Yes. Um, the average temperature across Earth's land and ocean surfaces last year was 0 0.95 degrees Celsius or 1.71 Fahrenheit above the 20th century average. Uh, Earth's average global surface temperature is now slightly more than one degree Celsius higher than it was in the late 19th century. Yes. Uh, as this is a, I guess, a commentary. I don't know who Charlie Gardner is. Have I interviewed Charlie Gardner? Anyway, this is his, his commentary as we act on climate, as we act on climate, he's already lost me, we must not neglect nature. Yes, the discussion of the environment has been unbalanced. Why all the talk is about carbon and climate, that is only, that actually is only half the story when it comes to our environmental crisis. No, Charlie, it's one-ninth of the story. The other catastrophe is, of course, the destruction of the natural world, the ecological crisis which threatens a million species with extinction over the coming decades. These twin evils are as important and serious as each other, but you would not think that from a glance at the papers as media coverage of the ecological crisis, you know, that has nothing to do with climate change, is being completely eclipsed by the climate, which received eight times more press attention in recent years. Uh, I'm surprised it's not higher than that. And, and I continue to make the uh, disclaimer <clears throat> that Collapse Chronicles is not a climate change channel. Climate change is one of the nine planetary boundaries. But as this man says, uh, climate change gets as, as much talk as all of the other planetary boundaries combined. This in, imbalance needs to be rectified, and Book Hermit is doing everything to rectify that, and we must start treating our tw twin crises equally because we cannot address them in isolation. Natural ecosystems such as forest wetlands and seagrass beds store huge amounts of carbon. Yes, do you see the dot connection here? Uh, we should get that man on the show. Uh, Let's see, guys. I have a lot to go through here. Uh, here is how uh, World War III in the South China Sea is playing out. Uh, Indonesia is increasing both its security and fishing presence in the waters around the Natuna Islands following the latest incursion 
into the area by Chinese vessels. China claims much of the South China Sea. Hmm. But that, the, the area around the Natunas is internationally recognized as part of Indonesia's exclusive economic zones. Yes, uh, observers warn that the arrival of these new boats could create new tensions while doing little to thwart Chinese or other foreign fishing boats. Yes, and meanwhile we have Indonesia, their big push to become a tourism paradise, yes, has uh, given rise to several conflicts with local communities over land rights as communities have been forcibly displaced for tourism development projects. Uh huh. Activists warn the situation is likely to get worse as the government prioritizes investments and development over the land rights of local citizens. Do you think so? Uh, you know, we spoke earlier about how these indigenous land uh, activists are getting gunned down, but uh, it's not just local residents as we see con conservationists in peril as scientists and campaigners risk their lives for their work. Yep, yep, yep. Do you think so? I have already uh, had a full video on this absolutely, th this absolute tragic joke about the United Nations' newest biodiversity targets, which are going to completely fail. Um... Uh, and uh, you know, guys, my problem, my biggest problem with Manga Bay, and don't get me wrong, I absolutely have nothing but respect for Rhett Butler and Manga Bay, is how Rhett continues to play these stories with a straight face, just parroting. Uh, the United Nations and the mainstream media, I am glad to see here in his synopsis that at least uh, <clears throat> he does say <coughs> some groups some groups have questioned whether offering protection to 30 percent of earth and strict and strict, protection to only 10% of the earth will be enough to curb the alarming loss of biodiversity being witnessed globally. But of course, uh, just either one of these is an absolute joke. Even if they did uh, hit these ridiculous targets in the first place, which ain't ever gonna happen, uh, no chance that any of this is going to happen, even if they did meet these ridiculous goals, which they're never going to meet. It would it would do nothing to uh, st to turning the sixth mass extinction around. So at least we can thank Manga Bay for pointing that out. Uh, here is a plea for Brazilian scientists to engage in environmental politics. Oh yeah, uh, I, I am sure uh, Bozo Nero really wants to hear what Brazilian scientists have to say about his 
uh, environmental crises that he is accelerating. What you're hearing in the background is an airboat. Here is their story that I mentioned earlier. Indonesian officials wield Shahira law in defense of Sumatran rhinos. Yes, kill a rhino, you will get 100 lashes of the cane. Yes, there are now 80 Sumatran rhinos estimated to be left on Earth. Uh, gee, imagine this, oil palm plantations being declared illegal. Yes. Uh, but we're going to wind up. Uh, I think I'm going to make this one the title quote. Rare plant species are especially vulnerable to climate change and rarity is more common than previously understood. There you go. Rarity is more common than previously understood. So they have now completed the single biggest study of rare plant species. Uh, okay, just, okay, they're, they're, look, they looked at 435,000 unique land plant species on planet Earth and have found that a large fraction of plant species on Earth, more than 36 percent, or over 158,000 species of plants can now be considered exceeding considered exceedingly rare. Uh, yes, the research team found that rare plant species tend to be clustered in a handful of rarity hot spots and that global warming and the impacts of human land use are already disproportionately impacting the regions that harbor most of these rare plant species. Oh God, I can tell that the holiday weekend is cranking up my, uh, my Trump voting landlady, uh, on one hand, she fled out of here for the weekend. She is nowhere to be seen. My landlady took off, left me with her parrot, and she is fleeing the, uh, the airboat invasion we can expect here in paradise that you're hearing cranking up in the background. And then, right before she gets in her car to flee from the airboat noise, she tells me we must go take an airboat ride when uh, she returns, that her friend has an airboat. And uh, I cannot wait to go on my first airboat ride of my entire life. Uh, I will be going on an airboat ride at some point in the next few weeks and will definitely, somewhere in the Doomosphere, will be bringing a, uh, a video of that adventure. But right now I need to wrap up this uh, chronicle of the collapse, uh, check in with the septic company, and I think I'm going canoeing this afternoon. And uh, if I don't get run over by an airboat in my canoe, uh, we will be back tomorrow. Do keep an eye out on Sunday for my interview with Sid Smith. That's a good one coming out on Sunday. And if you enjoyed this Chronicle of the Collapse, please spend a few seconds to thumb it up. If you did not enjoy it, spend a few seconds to thumb it down. 
and please by all means subscribe to Collapse Chronicles while you're over here and get out there and enjoy this planet before you get run over by an airboat and uh, if you're skinny dipping after 6 p.m. remember the airboats cannot see your naked body in the dark and they will run you over. Bye guys.